Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. I received a lot of requests to show you how to update your firmware on Ledger Nano S. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it short and I'm going to follow the original instructions of Ledger Nano S. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm going to go to this post on the official Ledger website. This is where you can find full instructions up to date exactly what you need to do step by step i'm going to be following these instructions and i'm going to have that link in the description below the video so first i'm going to click here how to update my ledger and iOS with the firmware 1.4 step one is to connect your ledger wallet and then you will have to if this is a new device you will have to click on that right button for about five seconds until you see the recovery. But I assume that you're not using a brand new device, you're actually using a device that you already have and you have been using it for a while. So it is configured, you already have your seed as well, that's also important. Make sure that you have your seed in a safe place. This is the first rule, right? Because without your seed, if something goes wrong, you might find it hard to recover. What you need to do is you will start your device, you will enter your PIN code, and then you will open the Ledger Manager app. It is this one here. This is the application that you're using first to install different applications on your device or to do any changes. And as you can see here, there is also the message that there is a new firmware available and it's urging you to install it. Okay, so let me get started. In my device, I'm going to go to settings and here I can go to device, firmware and I can see that currently I have 1.3.1 so I do need to update my firmware. Here I will go to firmwares and I will click on install. I will possibly not have enough space, let's find out. I need to confirm here that I am allowing Ledger Manager and it will start up, up. Okay, as I expected, it's not going to start uploading it because I need to remove applications from this device because I don't have any space. Currently I have Bitcoin, Ethereum, I have Ripple. So what I need to do right now is delete something and I can delete all of these applications or one of them because deleting the application doesn't delete my funds. My funds are stored on the blockchain and when I delete the application I can install it later on my funds will still be there. So let's go and do that. I'm gonna go to continue and I will go to applications I can delete the Ethereum application. Okay, I can even delete my Bitcoin application. And as we can see now, <laughs> I only have Ripple, right? Nothing else. This should provide enough space for the update. Let's go to firmwares again, click on install. Okay, now I need to confirm that this is the version that I'm downloading. It is 1.4.1. Okay, let's do that. I need to enter my pin again. Okay. And I'm getting the message that MCU firmware is outdated. Now let's go quickly here and see what do I need to do at this point. Okay, step five. Your Ledger Nano S will then display the following message. MCU firmware is outdated. Your Ledger Manager screen should look like this. That's exactly how it looks, okay? And now I need to do unplug and replug the Ledger Nano S while holding the left button. 
So I'm holding this button and I'm unplugging it from the device. As you can see, now I'm going to plug it again and I can't really do it with one hand. Okay, let's see now. Yes, bootloader. Great. Now I'm going to release it. Okay, and we are seeing that it is being restored. And now I'm getting to this window here, update. The next one I should be getting is installing firmware and that's where I am at the moment. On my device I can see this message processing and that's exactly what I'm getting. And the next step would be to enter my PIN code as well once this is done. Okay, there we are. I need to enter my pin again. Okay, and by default, right now I only have settings menu. I don't have any of my other applications. So even though I didn't delete the repo application, during this reset, the application got deleted, so now I will have to add it again. So what I'm going to do right now is here, I'm going to select the Bitcoin application, of course, that's the first one that I want. I'm going to allow Ledger Manager to add it to my device. Okay, now I'm going to add um, Repo because I had it. Let's just get repo. Okay, so now I have Bitcoin and repo. The third one I had was Ethereum. And I'm downloading Ethereum now. Not downloading, but installing. Okay. So now I have the applications that I previously had on my device. Let's go into my Bitcoin application. Even though I don't really have Bitcoin in this wallet because I'm using this just for this tutorial. I have a separate device where I'm actually keeping my funds, but um, you will still be able to see my history. Okay, let's close this application right now. The, the, the ledger manager I need to close in order to be able to access the Bitcoin wallet. And uh, seeing here, the last step, let me just do that before I open my wallet, is to go to settings, device, firmware, and now I can see that I have the 1.4.1, .1, which is the latest MCU 1.5. And in fact, this is MCU 1.5 when this tutorial here is showing it 1.4. So apparently they have released an even newer version, which is what I'm having here, 1.5. And that's it. Okay. Now I'm going to quit this. And the next thing would be to go into my Bitcoin wallet. I'm selecting the Bitcoin wallet. Here, I will select Bitcoin. And there we are. You can see my transactions, you can see my wallets. Everything is on zero just because I actually moved all of my Bitcoin to another wallet. But I didn't have to do that in order to successfully update this device. It's purely for the reason that I'm not using this device as my primary device. 
this is a device that I'm using mainly for tutorials. Now, why do you see that I have many wallets? Perhaps um, this is something that you have not explored. It's an option that you have here. You can actually add an account. After you've already put some funds into one of these accounts, originally you will just have one of them. If you want to add a secondary account, you can go here, you can click and you can add a new wallet. When you do that, this new wallet, you can see how I just created one. This new wallet will have a different private key, different public key as well from the other wallets. And this could be used in order to, you know, to just separate funds. Let's say that you're working with Bitcoin, you have business or something and you're receiving funds and you don't really want everything to go into the same wallet. This is why you would want to create more than one wallet within your original Bitcoin wallet. Okay, this is everything for this tutorial. I hope this is helping and it makes things easier and clear. Bear in mind that if you were using a firmware that was older than 1.3.1, which is the one that I was having, uh, you may be required to use your 24 seed words in order to restore your device after the update. So if you were using a firmware that was 1.3, or whatever, you know, something older than 1.3.1, then you will probably need your 24 seed words. Make sure that you have them handy. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's not going to be a different setup than what you just saw. You will have one extra step. And that would be when you are, when you restore everything before you enter your pin code, you will actually need to confirm the seed and then you will need to confirm the pin code and from there on it's the same as what I just did. Good luck with it. I hope you don't have any technical issues. If you have any technical issues, please write to support because I'm not really a technical guy. So it's very likely that I won't be able to answer these questions. Thanks for watching and I hope this is helping you. If it does, click the like button and then if you know anyone that this video will help, share it with them, spread the word make it easier for people to update their firmware. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video.